Pod 9J. We out here. Nickel, nickel. Yee! C-Dub on the beat. Slide through that city, made that Chevy swerve. Yeah. The bank account jumping, gotta do a twerk. Uh, Keep hating like you is and get your feelings hurt. Uh, I got the 10 cent low. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling blessing like I always say. It's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, man... Thought about this, I was scrolling through my feed and I was looking up, you know, Sudanio Vadio, see if any Vadio stood out to me. And then I remember somebody I was busted with and remember a crazy memory. And then Toker comes up and I was like, wait a minute, I got a memory. Not about the dude, I'm not going to be on YouTube lying saying I met the dude. No, I didn't. But I heard his music. So trip out how I heard his music. Funny story, on the way, new video. So let's get into it. With that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for the Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and stream my music. Share my music with your friends and family. Thank you guys for tuning in. And most importantly, thank you guys for your guys' support. Now, I've shared plenty of stories about, you know, Sureños from Tulare, California. Bumping Sureño music. I've also talked about the infamous, notorious, and famous... Indoor swap meet where we used to catch southerners slipping and southerners would catch us slipping. That was like their home base. That was like their honeycomb right there. All Sudanio clothes, man. 95% of it was Sudanio clothes. A couple of little red shirts here and there. But whatever they were, that was like, the, that was the place to go gangbang. That was gangbang central. We go over there and we get the squabbing, we get the beating, we get the shooting and stabbing. Just how it worked. But, you know, I was familiar with a lot of Sudanio music. Obviously, I'm around my time in the 99, 2000s when I started gangbanging. Lil Rob was really out there, you know, natural high, natural high, wicked, 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 he got off on that one, I ain't gonna lie, bro, with that weird goatee that he has, then, you know, Night Out, I used to hear Night Out in Hawaii a lot, then, um, you know, a lot of Sudanese, uh, well, I, I was dating, uh, no, I was messing with some girl, and I know Central Coast Click came up one time, and I ain't gonna lie, bro, all I heard was South Side, South Side, scream this with pride, represent your side i was like you know what i don't like that music i don't like them guys i'd put them on site and i'd blitz them but that song slapped for some reason they got off let me tell you how i came across Brownside and toker's music let's get into this so i had a homeboy from what well, let's go back in time there was three girls that were always best friends with each other and uh one of them uh three there's three girls yesenia sarah lanaire and that white girl was Jamie. I just can't remember her last name, man. But she was white, had a white girl body, blonde hair, blue eyes. But all three of these girls like thugs. So I used to go to school with them. I used to mess around with Yesenia. But uh, me and Yesenia used to mess around a lot after I lost my V card. But it's just that everybody used to always ask me how come we didn't get together. I still got pictures of, 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 of me and her. And... Uh, they would, they would always ask, how come I never, like, got into a relationship and started dating her? It's because right here, by her lips, she had, like, a little peach fuzz. So, so it kind of looked like a little baby mustache. It was light, but when you get close, you can see it. And I was, when I've seen it on the school bus, I remember telling the homies, like, hey, bro, she got a mustache, bro. Like, I didn't even know girls can grow mustaches. And some of my older homies were like, bro, they, yeah, you just thinking like a little kid, bro. Yeah, they do. They shave that too, bro. They, they shave. I'm like, for real? They can grow goatees and mustaches like us? I didn't know that. I don't want to kiss a girl that looks like Pancho Villa. I really don't. Ugh. That's nasty. But so she had a, a light one. So, you know, from far distance, she was gorgeous. But when I got up and close, my eyes would zone in on her little peach fuzz that came out the side. And I was like a little bit right here. And I said, like, she got more hair than me. And I was 13 years old. Ugh. Like she tickled my upper lip. How is that possible? But I didn't know, bro. I didn't know girls grew peach fuzzes when they're in their mustaches or whatever. When they were, when I was younger, that was me just being young and ignorant. I didn't know no better. That's why I never really dated her. I would just, you know, sneak in her window at night. But I guess when she was kicking, when those three girls were kicking it around the hood a lot, homies were like running backs on them. Like one night, the homies over here, over here, and over here. Then like a week later. More homies are in their windows. Two weeks later, then they set of homies in the neck. They were giving it up, but, but they wanted to be cool with the hood. They wanted to be cool with the homies. But we already had our certain set of homegirls that we, like, loved and idolized that didn't give it up to us, but we respected them 
and we were cool with them. So we kind of used those as bops, you know. They were just boppers, bro. We just ran through them. So we kind of like treated them like dirt sometimes, which was kind of messed up if you ask me. We kind of pushed them away. So obviously they go to a different school, like later on after like eighth grade, ninth grade. And then bam, what do you know? They meet up with some Sureños. And you know Sureños got that, what's up Chula, what's up girl, what's up fool? You know, they fell madly in love with these dudes. You know what I mean? Like obviously these dudes were a little bit more handsome and a little bit more respectful and had a different kind of swag. Where, hey, they, they, they switched sides, man. They jumped the fence. So I remember one day, bro, I remember one day I went to my hood. I got tired of kicking it on the west side. I got tired of smoking dope. I was like, bro, I miss my hood, bro. I just want to go back to my hood and chill with my homegirls, my homies, whatever. So I go to the homie Theo Moraz's pad, and um, Theo Moraz had a sister named Veronica. And Veronica had a homegirl named uh, Elizabeth. Well, both of them were bad to be. Actually, I just I could never mess with the homie's sister because... He never left the damn house. Oh, trust me, if he'd have left the house, I'd have been like, hey, homie, it's for the hood, bro. Do it for the hood. You ain't going to let me do it for the hood? She wants me. She's from the hood. But nah, but they were always in the room, but I was trying to get at Elizabeth. And I was like trying to like, I, dude, it was, I was already sparking suspicion. Because you got the homie Thale, Giggler, and Steven, may he rest in peace, all right there. Steven's running the hood. Giggler's my big homie. Thale's just a homie from my hood that I, I mean, I'll squab him any day. But he was still older. It's like they knew I was in the house for if they if I went in that house, the front house, they knew it was because I was talking to the sister. And for some reason they'd be right there getting tacos or making something to eat, getting something to drink, yada 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 yada. And they'd just be right there looking and I'm like, man, I can't spit no vernacular in here in this house, bro. Bunch of haters, bro. Like, come on, it's not my fault, your sister just you know, she grew into the body and I'm fifteen and she's fifteen and we wanna uh do puppy love. You know what I mean? She's looking at me, but I'm looking at her and her friend. So anyways, I'm getting at Elizabeth. I come back out. I go. To, I was about to walk to the bench, and then look, look, look who shows up. I see this big old old school Cadillac pull up, all junky. Or I think it was a, uh, yeah, it was a Cadillac Caprice. Pulls up. I'm like, who's that? She know, I had a 380 at the time. I think only like two or three bullets. I'm like, man, who's that? With that? And homie's like, I'm not sure, bro. And I see... Yesenia, Sarah, and Jamie pop out. And they, I mean, the, the audacity, arrogance, and narcissism of these three little girls. They showed up, blue down. Baby blue, dark blue, all blue, navy blue, sky blue. And they walked up to us and they were like, hey, what's up? Y'all want to match some blunts real quick? My sister's going to wait in the car and then we're going to be out. And all three of us, it's me, the twins, Theo, Giggers in the garage all tweaked out, and he's not sticking his head out for no reason. And we're kind of like, hey, bro, is this a setup, bro? Are they going to have Sureños just around the corner just light us up, bro? Like, you know, it was getting funky at the time, man. Sureños and us were going at it tough, bro. They were, they were shooting. So we're like, yeah, yeah, sure, just one blunt, though, all right? And they're like, yeah, sure, sure, it's cool. So they sit on the benches. We're rolling one up, but we're like, we're not even getting at these hinas, bro. These hinas are just like, so what's up with you fools? What you guys been up to? And we're like, chilling, kicking back, we in the hood. Well, uh, just small talk, bro. And they feel the awkwardness. So we're passing blunts. We're going back and forth. We're getting lit. And then Yesenia goes, what's up, fool? You guys ain't even trying to get at us or nothing. And that's when I was just lit. And I was like, man. Y'all whoopty woo lovers, bro. Like, ain't nobody trying to mess with y'all fools no more, bro. Like, I don't know. My, it just came out. And then Yasinia goes, Fool, I've known you since we were young, since we were kids. Man, we're like 15, 16 now, bro. That was like three years ago. It's not that damn far. And then she's like, don't even act stupid. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, bro. That's, that's, that's tainted right there, bro. That's, mm -mm, ain't nobody trying to have that no more. That, that, that's beat up. But it was already beat up when we had it. But, you know, now it's just wrecked. Now it's just sabotaged. Ain't no redemption. Ain't no bounce back. Ain't no vinegar oil going to make it snap back. Nothing. Not even surgery. Not even surgery. So we smoked the blunts and uh, they, they, they said something along the lines like, let's just go kick it back with these fools. Man. I think what they were looking at, they were looking to, they wanted to get beat. Now, obviously, they weren't getting the attention with on the other side. So they wound up leaving. I'm like, whatever. So a couple of months go by. And uh, my boy Juice, 
I don't know how this happened, but he wound up starting to date Sarah. Uh, just don't ask me. I don't know what took place. And I remember my uh, Juicy used to always be like, all right, he'll be in the hood for like two hours after school. And he'd be like, all right, I'm finna go to my girl's pad. And we're like, Sarah? And they'd be like, he'd be like, yeah. He'd be just lit like, yeah. And I'd be like, bro, you're going to end up dead, bro. That home girl's going to set you up. Watch, bro. Them Southerners are going to tear you up, bro. But he always had a 38 with him. He's like, I ain't tripping on these. But he was slow when he got high. So he was like, I ain't tripping on these fools, bro. I ain't tripping on these fools. I got this with me, bro. I ain't tripping, bro. But see, my boy Juice was shy. He was real shy. Like, he, even around the homies, he would just be high, just be quiet. We'd have to talk to him to get him to talk, or else he won't talk. He's just a quiet dude, but he's from the hood. Well, around this time, STL started going at it with SF over politics and over the homie Johnny Flores. And uh, things got a little shaky. We're always at Johnny's pad. Me, Juice, Edward, a bunch of us were just going at it with our own hood. So it was kind of hard to walk in my hood. So a lot of times, if I wasn't at Johnny's pad, I was on the west side. So... One day I pick up, uh, cause I got out of school at twelve, because I was on a uh, probation, academic probation, and I go pick up Juice from Community, and uh, we're walking through the hood, and my boy looks hella sad, and I'm like, man, what's up? Starts chopping it up, and he's like, hey, fool, I'm finna, I'm finna go shoot some stuff up right now, bro. I'm gonna drop you off somewhere. I was like, nah, I go with you. Who we gonna shoot up? He was like, man, I want to do this by myself, bro. And I'm like, what's up, fool? And he was like, man, my Sarah broke up with me, fool. I was like, that's what you're going to go do? You're out of, out of hurt and pain? You're going to go shoot some houses up? For real? For some chick? Why? What happened? And then he broke it down. He was like, hey, bro, uh, she just wasn't feeling me, bro. She wasn't feeling me at all, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He wouldn't tell me exactly what. What was the reason? She did. He didn't. So he goes about his business. And I hear he was just leaning over fences, shooting at homies from the hoods, past, shooting at their windows, shooting at their garages, like shooting their tires. He just went on a crazy spree for like a couple of nights. I didn't think much of it. Well, I wound up running into Sarah later on. I didn't think much of it. I didn't think to hit her up. Now, mind you, I didn't. I never hit Sarah. I've hit Yesenia and I hit Jamie like twice because Jamie lived like three blocks from me. But I never got to hit Sarah. So Sarah approaches me. She has a little black top on. Some baggy little sweats, some little house shoes, her hair all woo woo. And she, Sarah's like maybe 5'1, five 5'2 five with the tallest. Petite little body. And she hits me up at a store. And I remember, uh, I think I was trying to steal a 40. I'm not sure. I think a 40 at King Cobra. And I think I was pocketed when she walked up, so I thought I got caught by the clerk. And I was like, what's up? And she's like, what's up, fool? We started chopping it up again. I'm like, Whatever, man, I'm not real. I don't really care, bro. I'm like, I'm trying to get out the store and go drink this 40 on the hood. And she's like, hey, fool, uh, let me give you my number. And I was like, for what? She's like, just let me give you my number. Just call me tonight. I was like, man, shoot it real quick. So he shoots it. Yeah, I'm a dog. I know my homie just broke up with her, but I was 15, bro. I was, I'd hump anything, bro. I did not give a damn who you were related to or what, bro. I'm, I think with my other head, not this head when at the age. So bam, she gives me the number. I remember drinking in the hood, like, not that night, but the next night, and I went home, and it was dark, bro. It was, like, maybe, it had to be at, like, 1 or 2, and I was mobbing the hood, and I was like, bro, nobody out here. Everybody's asleep, bunch of lazy people. I mean, I'm finna go home. So I go home, I get on my little, I get on my phone that my mom gave me, and I call her. And sure enough, the, the Sureno she was dating answered the phone. And she, I can hear him, I can hear both of them scuffling, trying to get the phone from one another, and all I hear is, hey, who is that fool, man? Talk that fool, what's up, fool, wicked ass, woo, 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 they banging on me, tres of this, tres of that, sur this, sur that, I'm like, oh, damn, wrong, bad timing, and she's like, hey, fool, I'll call you back, all right, so bam, they hang up the phone, she didn't call me back that night, I'm thinking he whooped her or something, she calls me three days later, and she was telling me the whole story. Yeah, like she was trying to get back with them, but he was acting stupid and he doesn't want to let her out the house. She can't go anywhere there when she's when she's there with them. Yada 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 yada. So I'm laying on my bed. I had the Xbox when it first came out. I'm just playing. I'm like, I right, so what's up, my boy? You and Juice. What do you say about him and Juice? Like, what well, what happened? You were like messing with him when you were messing with Juice. What happened with Juice? And she goes, Nah, Juice is hella nice. He's hella sweet, but he's just soft. And I'm like. What you mean by soft? And she started telling me, like, bro, like, he's less soft. He's too nice. 
Like, I need somebody that's going to choke me and, like, slap me around at least and yell at me. He didn't do none of that. Like, he was hella boring. I'm like, damn, that's messed up, man. You broke my boy's heart because you just want to get your whooped or what? And she was like, yeah. She said that's the reason why she was with that Sudeno. He beat on her. She loved it. But now he was going too far. Like, she couldn't go out the house. She couldn't call none of her friends. She couldn't kick it with Senya and Jamie. Yada, 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 yada. I'm like, ah, right, that's what's up, man. Ooh, ooh. And then she goes, but he's not here tonight. I'm like, where you live? She's like, on the west side by Tulare Western. I was like, man, that's hella far, bro. I'm not 15 years old. I don't have no ride. And she goes, look, if you can find your way over here, you can get it. I was like, man, that's like a 35, 40-minute walk. I was like, I'll be there. Just give me some time. I'll, just, I'll call you when I'm close by, or at least when I cross the train tracks. She goes, all right, then. We hung up. That's how I was back in the day, bro. If a girl told me she was in Visalia and talk about you get here right now, you can get it all night, I will walk from Tulare to Visalia. I did not care. So what do I do? It's midnight. I know the streets like the back of my hand, bro. I'm just mobbing in the middle of the night. Go all the way past Tulare Fairgrounds, cross the street, cross a couple of streets. I just know Western is that way. So as long as I walk diagonal that way, never mind the streets, I'll make it. So I get to Tulare Western, and I'm like, I call. And I'm like, I'm sitting by Tulare Western in the back by the field. And I'm like, hey, what's up, man? I'm right here by Western. Took me a while. I was a little hot. You know, I was wearing a lot of clothes, too. I had a red shirt over a black sweater and some black dickies and some white and black Cortezes. So I'm chilling. And then she tells me, hey, it's over here. Go down this road. So I go down. There's some little some Back in the day, there was some, a trailer park. I turned to the street on the right at the end of the trailer park, go all the way down. And she was like, there's going to be two white cars parked. One of them is good, and the other one's all broken down, sitting on bricks. I'm like, all right, then. And I'm getting there, and I was like, I can see it. She goes, all right, then just stand out there. I'll call you. I'll, I'll, I'll come get you. Dude, she had me out there for like 15 minutes. And then finally, I see her walking out like on the side of the house, just tippy him. She's all, shh. So, bam, she holds my hand. We walk in through the front door. Bro, as soon as we walk in, I see the mom, dad, and I think her little brother were all on the couch watching TV under blankets, quiet. I'm like, damn, bro, if I even step on a crumb of popcorn, bro, they're going to wake up. They're going to hear it, bro. They're right here. So, we had a tippy toe all the way to her room, hella slow. But in my head, I'm like, bro, I'm getting my issue, bro. I walked all across town for this, bro. I'm hitting at least three rounds on this chick, bro. Mandatory. Mind you, homegirl's 15, 16 like me. So when we get there, when I get there, boom, the lights are off. And I'm like, hey, hey, turn the light on. I can't see. She's like, shut up, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, I can't freaking see. So boom, she turns on a, she turns on a nightlight lamp. A nightlight lamp. She still had a nightlight lamp in her room. I'm like, man, what the? F what, are you scared of the dark or what? That's crazy. Didn't think much of it. What I did think about was the damn dollhouse that she had sitting on her dresser. So I asked her, I was like, hey, man, what's up, man? This is your sister's room? She's like, nah, this is my room. I'm like, what? And I'm just staring at the dollhouse with like eight dolls on the dresser, leaning against the mirror, all staring our direction. I'm like, damn, I'm about to perform in front of an audience of weird-looking dolls. This is creepy. Whatever. So we sit next to each other on the bed, and she's like, look, I'm a... So we, I sit next to her on the bed, and we just start chopping it up real quick. I didn't make my move just yet. And then I was like, hey, man, what's up, man? Throw some music on. She's like, all right. And I see her going through a bunch of tapes. She had a... Uh, it was like a black boombox, and it had like an old-school little uh, record player on top of it, and she had two speakers... So she plays, a, she plays a tape. I wasn't paying no mind to it. I was not paying no mind to it. Talking to her for a little bit, and then this song comes on. And low-key, it sounded tight. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Why she's chopping it up with me about the Sureño boyfriend that she can't get rid of? I'm like, hey, what song is this? And she's like, I don't know. It's one of his tapes. I'm like, hmm. Hey, this song's tight, though. And all I hear is gangsta life in the city. You know we got to stay alive. Something, something, do or die. Oh, and I was like, this shit's tight. I ain't going to lie. So I'm talking to her, and I'm like, I'm vibing now. Like, I'm feeling good. She said the good, she, it was good music. I was like, cool. 
Because I know it was like one of those tapes you record songs on. Because I heard, uh, all I heard the song before was like, I am the rapper that they call Fote. And I'm going to tell you like my homie Short Dog was. Say it was an old school one. And then she had like, want to be a baller. I'll tell you why I remember all those songs on that tape. I'll tell you why. So when that song's playing, dude starts busting. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Toker. And then as I'm chopping it up, all I hear is, in my crazy ass hood, it's an everyday thing. Eastside Thresh is my motherfucking gang. Hey, getting paid. Fucking all these hoes. And I'm like, what? And then I'm looking at her, and then she's, I just see her face go, like, from chopping it up, like, it would, what? I was like, bro, that's that, you know, I said the word, music. She goes, yeah, it's his tape. I was like, man, turn that crap off, boy. We'll put on something else. And then she goes, and she starts fumbling through the tapes, and she goes, all I got is his music. You know, he was staying here. This is all his music. I don't have nothing. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Just play the tape, bro. Play the tape. Bam. I make my move with the stupid nightlight on the side of the bed. It was a dumb nightlight you plug into the wall, but it brightened up the room, though, so I was able to see. And remember, she's a tiny little girl, bro. She's tiny. She's skinny. Doesn't really have a body, bro. She's Everything was flat, like 6 o'clock flat, like like flat. Y'all you know talking about little ant hills. I'm talking about little whatever. But I start doing my thing. What grossed me out is that when I met her the other day, when we were smoking weed, she had a lot of makeup on. Tonight, she didn't have nothing on. So, bam, she's like full, face full of acne. I mean, bad acne, like a zit right here. But I'm in my head, I'm like, bro, I'm already here, bro. bro I've, done, I've done worse than this, bro. Like, Carmelita from the West Side, bro, that was bad, bro. That was the, probably the worst one I've ever done, bro. That was, like, worse than deformed and disabled at the same time bad. But I still did that. I didn't. I mean, I had not have. I did have a choice, but I didn't have a choice. So, I'm I'm, I'm on top, like, <clears throat> woo, doing my thing. Mm, mm, mm. And then as like I'm looking down, not only does she has pimples on her nose, like right here, but she had pimples on her chest. And I was like, what the? F-? Like, I did not think that you can get pimples on the chest. I've never seen a pimple on my body on the chest. I've never seen pimples on anybody's chest, ever. And she had pimples like right here. I don't know if she had an acne issue or what, or it was a rash, but she had it. They were all red, like they were like irritated. And I'm like, bro, and they're like, all the ones that had white heads, I'm like, bro, that's. I do what I gotta do. I lay down with her, we're chilling, and then I'm staring at the damn dollhouse with all these dolls, just like that. I was like, bro, I'm not gonna be here that long, bro. I'm not, I'll, I don't care if it's four in the morning, I'll walk right back home. I walk right back home. I'm not tripping. But bam, she's uh, she's uh, she rubs her, she rubs her thigh against me. I'm like, What's up? And then I start rubbing her thigh, and uh, I see the uh, the I feel the bumps on her on her legs. I go, What's the matter? Are you cold? She's like, No, I wasn't finished. I'm like, Oh, my bad. Ah, <laughs> jump right back in. Now we're doing our thing, but this time I turn her around, bro, because then pimples starting to look like. That little dude, uh, Gizmo off the, the gremlins, like, we need the water on them, all the pimples. Uh, so I turn her around, nothing to deal with, I'm just hitting them, but at this point, I'm just hitting backbone and spinal cords, that's it, I don't feel no, no tushy, no nothing. <laughs> Do my thing. Boom. Start chopping it up again, she rolls a blunt, but it's like, it was, it was some weak weed, it was hella boo-boo, like bammer, it was some bammer. So we're high, we're chopping it up. I'm thinking about going another round. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? You got any more weed? And she's like, no, but I got a bag of seeds. I'm like, what? I was like, what the hell are you gonna do with a bag of seeds? You can, well, we're gonna, I'm supposed to wait for you to grow a plant so I can smoke? She goes, no, look. And she grabs a, a, a weed pipe and she packs all the seeds in there. She goes, hey, if you hit all the seeds, you'll get high. I started laughing. I was like, yeah, let me go ahead. Go ahead. And when she's smoking seeds, just the seeds from the bammer weed and just hitting them. <laughs> you want to hit? I was like, mm mm. That that smelled like dirt popcorn, bro. Like you're sm- you're pretty much smoking uh, kennels out of a. No, go ahead, do your thing, bro. I'm good, I'm good. And she's, I swear, bro, she took like eight rips of nothing but seeds in the pipe from when she was just blowing smoke out. Thought she was getting lit. I, I mean, if she got lit, she got lit. So we lay back down, we're chopping it up in my head. I'm, I'm waiting to get my energy up. I'm waiting for him to beef up. I'm smelling her hair. I'm rubbing her head. I'm, I'm touching whatever was on her. 
kind of staying away from the, the pimple popping area. And uh, she passes out. And I was like, I ain't finna sleep here, bro. And then their parents wake up. So I get up and I'm like, all right, you know, light lights on. Then I look at that tape. And I was like, bro, I want that tape, bro. The only problem is she, she took the tape out and put another tape in, but didn't play the tape. So I didn't know what tape it was. But she had six of them. And I'm like, man, what does she care, bro? She don't even like that fool anyways. I grab all six tapes and I tuck them. Then I was like, she's still asleep. So I'm like going through her drawers, looking at her, her yannies. And I'm like, mm, whatever, they smell fresh. I went through everything. Well, I figured since I already stole the tapes, I might as well steal other stuff. Took her for her phone. There was like $20 in her wallet. I took that. There was a, a pretty little necklace that had a little butterfly on it. I took that. I scrummaged through everything. He had some stuff there too, but I was stuff that I wasn't going to wear. And I snuck out. And I was like, damn, try to make it past the parents. So I opened the front door. They don't move. On the way out, I was like... I'm about to slam this fucking door. And that's what I do. I just slam it hard. Boom! And as soon as I slam it, I just broke. I'm running down the block as fast as I can. Until I hit to the trailer park and turn left. I think it was on Pleasant Street. And when I look back, I didn't see nobody. But I know for sure I woke somebody up in that house. And I walked all the way home about 3 or 4 in the morning. And no cap. I wouldn't play that in front of the homies. But at home, if I was ironing my clothes, cleaning the room, or spending time with my family, and I didn't want to go to the streets, and I just wanted to kick back and eat and sleep, I would play that tape. Because I remember it had uh, Freaky Tales on there. It had like three or four songs of, uh, of Brownside. Uh, it had um, Rapper Fote on there. It had some E-40, uh, Wanna Be a Baller. Like, dude, dude had a cool collection of Southsider music. And I didn't really care, you know, because I had my CDs. I had Sir Dino and Cricket and, you know, and, and uh, Tolkstedo. I had all the GUN CDs, you know. Sometimes you get burnt out of your own music. And I was like, bro, they kind of slap. This, they had Mr. Shadow Till I Die on there. A couple of songs off that album. I had uh, some fool named Lil One. And that fool Lil One, for some reason, he got off. He was just on some triple six music, like devil worshiping music. I was like... Yeah, it's, it's cool, but not that cool. But I'll never forget that moment when I was just like getting at her in my head. I'm lusting. I'm, I'm already undressing her in my eyes. I'm finna beat guts and I'm never mind the pimples. And all I hear is, Isa Tres is my motherfucking gang ain't getting paid. And I was like, what? Like, homegirl that had, what the disrespect of this girl. But it wasn't her fault though. But I thought I'd tell you guys that story. I, re I still remember her name to this day Sarah Lanier. L-I-N-A-R-E or A-R-A, whatever her name was. She was pretty, though. So, with that being said, that's how I came across his music. Found out when I got out of Pro this time that he passed away. So, shout out to uh, Token from Brownside. You know, he left his legacy behind. Good music. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that follow his music because, you know, the boy was famous and they came out cool with that album. So, with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.